demonstrations of the birch bark bitings, which are right here. Um, the birch bark bitings are the rarest and rarest and um, one of, well, it wasn't used as an art form a thousand years ago. What it was used for was the cult cultural, historical, and um, ceremonial preservation, as well as hunting and fishing maps. Um, well, we've heard that they were used for in, in, in uh, that way in the Gitsan and Shimshan territory. Um, the, the birch bark bitings have been found in um, the Innu territory, um, Mohawk, Anishinaabe, Cree. Um, I heard they were found in rank. Well, not heard. I know they were found in Rankin Inlet, uh, Chippewa territory in the United States. Pretty much right across Canada, wherever there is a birch tree found, they used to use them for the preservation of what I talked about there um, and I I heard that it was used just for um, for uh, for the hereditary chiefs uh, for, so for, I heard it was for the hereditary chiefs eyes only in regards to um, the, the father when he was about to pass on and he was ready to pass on the history to his son who would be next in line for the hereditary chief he would they would open up the scrolls which were the birch bark bitings were wrapped into, um, I heard, bark scrolls and they would seal them with sap for preservation. Then they would unwrap those and they would show the sun, these are the ceremonies, these are the hunting and fishing maps, this is the cultural um, aspect that you need to follow, the certain protocols. And um, and then it was for their eyes only and I bel I, I'm not too sure if there was birch bark biting men or women. but. Um, so I believe the birch bark fighter would also have seen the hunting and fishing maps. And uh, my mom is one of three ladies that is practicing the birch bark bitings, um, that are marketing the birch bark bitings today. And um, we've studied the birch bark bitings um, that have, are in uh, the, the Museum of History and Civilization in Hall, Quebec. And um, none of the birch bark bitings that they have found have ever compared and have been this elaborate in the history of uh, the First Nations people. And um, here's a collection of some of the pieces here. These are the more elaborate pieces. They will be, we have a number being framed. This one's a really cool one. It's called, it's called Once We Were Warriors. And it's got the people holding uh, spears on the end. And then there's three people holding drums in the middle. And then there's a shield on the end there. And then if you look at this to a light, how about we go by the window? I think we might be able to get it better. If you look at that in the light, then the patterns are all illuminated. And then what it is, it's a single layer of birch bark. And um, so my mother gathers the birch bark in the spring. Her name's Half Moon Woman. She gathers the birch bark in the spring because they say that's the best time to do it. And um, what she does is there's 12 different uh, stages to actually get it to the finished product and then what she does is she just imagines these patterns in her head and it's a blind art form because you can't see what she's doing and then she'll just start biting the pattern that image that's in her head then when she opens it up voila it's a beautiful piece of artwork here i'll show another piece here oh this is a beautiful piece to be illuminated certificate is blocking the the thing as you can see. So we have quite the collection of birch bark bitings. And we can come back here and talk about this piece here. 